Welcome to Lure Making 101, the simple tutorial series for beginners to lure making with minimal tools, materials and experience. In today's tutorial we get a bait pop and dock with a 60mm balsa popper lure. Now you may have seen this lure before in Fishing Monthly magazine, if not check them out at fishingmonthly.com.au and for tips and templates, visit my website makewoodenlures.com slash fishing dash monthly. Now as we've done for all the lures in this series, we're going to start by outlining the side profile of our lure onto a piece of balsa. This is 12mm or half inch thick balsa, and I'm just marking it out with the side profile so I can cut the lures out from the plank. Next I'll slice the lures apart using a sharp utility knife and then I'll trim away most of the waste being careful not to go right down to the line. We're going to clean up the blank shortly. Obviously this is a popper lure so the front of the lure is going to be kept nice and square. I'll trim that in several cuts to make it nice and clean. Now I'm going to use a square sanding block and a flat surface to square up all the surfaces and make sure that the lure is in square in cross section. Once I'm done with the convex surfaces, I'll start on the concave surface around the belly of the lure using a curved sanding block. I'm going to mark a centre line down the long sides of the lure, just doing it by eye with a pen. Now you can mark this out with a marking gauge or some other jig if you want to get it more accurate, but I find I can get it accurate enough by eye. Then I'll lay the template back on the lure blank and I'll mark the location of the hook hangers and the toe point and the weight. Now it's time to go to work with our battery drill and a 3mm drill bit and just drill the holes for the hook hangers and toe points which we're going to make in just a moment. Get these as straight and as central as you can so that everything's aligned properly in the lure to give it the best action. Now to keep our lure properly oriented on the water and to stop it from breaking out off the surface, I'm going to add a little bit of weight to the belly, so I'm drilling a hole with a 5mm brad point bit. Now we're ready to shape the top profile. So we'll put the template back on the lure and mark out the shape. One of the great things about handmade popper lures is that you can get some unusual and complex shapes that you can't get when you turn a popper lure on the lathe. Trim away the waste in light cuts, try and keep everything reasonably square, and we'll clean things up after this step. Next I'll mark some carving guidelines. So I'll start by putting a centre line along each of the long edges of the lure. Then I'll mark another line halfway between the centre line and the edge of the wood. We 
This lure is going to be fairly round in cross section, so you should find that all the lines are fairly symmetrical. And with a sharp utility knife, I'll just trim away the waste between those carving lines. It's better to take off too little wood here rather than too much because you can always take off more a little bit later and refine the shape with sandpaper. Remember to work with the grain and work away from your hands to prevent cutting yourself. Now I'm going to finish the shaping with a piece of sandpaper. Be careful of you, as you sand to check the shape of the lure regularly because it is easy to remove too much timber and spoil the lure body. Don't press too hard and use a nice fresh clean piece of sandpaper to get the best results. I'll use a sanding block to just square the front face before I make the pop and mouth. To shape the mouth of the popper I'm going to use a bull-nosed rotary burr. You can find these at most hardware shops, or you can get them online if you can't find them locally. Start with the burr angled at 45 degrees, and as you get the mouth shaped, rotate the drill round so that the burr is moving perpendicular to the lure. This will give you a nice clean, even, smooth face. When it comes to assembly, we have three options for putting our toe points and hook hangers on the lure. Screw eyes, twist eyes, or a through wire. Now throughout this series, we've used twist eyes, and I'm gonna to continue to use twist eyes for this particular lure. The reason being is that twist eyes are quick and easy to make. They don't require any special materials that you find hard to get, and they're strong enough for our purposes. But if you are gonna be fishing this lure on line classes of six kilos or higher, then I suggest switching to a through wire. Here's how I make my twist eyes, using a 3mm drill bit to make the initial loop and a couple of pairs of pliers to twist it up, make it nice and strong and give the glue plenty to hold on to. And there it is. I'm going to go ahead and glue the twist eyes into the tail and the belly of the lure. I'm not going to add the toe point just yet because it makes it difficult to clean out that concave mouth later on if you need to. After you've hardened the lure you probably find there's some resin in there that needs to be cleaned out with the rotary burr and you can't do that if there's a, screw, if there's a toe point already installed. Whilst I'm assembling the lure I'll also add the ball sinker and put a little bit of glue over the top of that to fill the hole. I'll smooth that off later, ready for painting. Remember to use 24 hour epoxy for this, it'll give you a much stronger and longer lasting result. Next I'm going to harden the balsa. You'll find instructions for doing this on my website, but basically I've warmed the wood thin down some epoxy and I'm brushing it on so that it soaks into the timber, fills up the grain and goes hard to make the wood waterproof and tough. Alright, time to paint our lure. Now of course as usual you can go to the automotive shop, pick up some automotive touch up paints or you can go to the art shop and pick up some acrylic artist paints and they'll be just fine for lure painting. 
But if you want to do a really professional job, the best thing is to get yourself an airbrush. And I'm going to use an airbrush to finish this lure off. I'm going to paint a very simple pattern on this lure. So I'll start firstly by giving it a coat of Autoborn White Sealer. This will give me a good adhesive base for the subsequent coats to stick to. Next I'll paint some white. And then I'll paint the sides and back of the lure in a yellow. When I'm happy with the yellow, I'll go over the top of the back using Auto Wear Lime Green, Pearl Lime Green to give lots of sheen and good coloration. And then I'll paint some white spots around the lure body to highlight and accentuate the frog-like pattern that I'm going to paint next. Once I'm happy with the white spots, I'll put a black spot in the centre of each one. This will give me a simple frog pattern that's attractive and fish love it. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Remember, the templates and tips go to my website makewoodenlures.com slash fishing-monthly. I'll see you there. Bye for now.